Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, uh, another uh, article in Applied Ethics, uh, called Real World Justice, by a philosopher called Thomas Poggi. These are the details of the article. Uh, this is uh, continuing in our uh, foray with uh, Applied Ethics. So, as we remember um, earlier, we had tackled another uh, uh, philosopher, uh, delving into Applied Ethics. And now, we have another strain of uh, philosophers in the real world, engaging with conceptual reasons of world poverty in a world, uh, with growing average income. So, now, uh, this is again, when a philosophy, a philosopher descends from uh, the alleged uh, ivory towers, and comes down to engage with the problems of the real world out there. Now, uh, this is quite a passionate plea. But the difference with Singer comes out to be, this is quite uh, numerically uh, backed up. So, it is often that philosophers are blissfully ignorant of uh, empirical happening. So, we say in philosophy of mind, uh, uh, doing philosophy of mind, without uh, uh, knowledge of uh, the current state of neurosciences. So, uh, these all seem to uh, disengage philosophy from the world out there. Whereas, uh, many philosophers would argue that philosophy is perhaps the most applied discipline, because that is the way you lead your life. This is an example, this uh, article picked up is an example of uh, such a claim. So, when uh, Poggi asks philosophers to engage in the debate, armed with factual information. So, this is kind of a, uh, a pun, a kind of a, a critique, that well, philosophers have always been tangentially uh, distanced from uh, uh, factual information. It has always been about arguments in principle, and never about fact. So, well, here a very, um, uh, Poggi brings to light a very implicit conflict between uh, ethics and economics, and uh, particularly market economics, as it is uh, uh, practiced today. And which is a dominant strain of, which is almost become the whole of economic thinking today. Economics as a discipline has strongly been influenced by free, uh, what they call free, free market economy and uh, market economics. So, uh, economic theories are uh, not final that they are to be, a what uh, I quote him, he says, absorbed with caution. Now, today we are used to, depending on the experts. We, we depend on the experts for uh, medical advice, we depend on uh, um, experts for economic advice, we depend on uh, experts uh, all over. Now, uh, why should a government be run by uh, elected politicians? Why not uh, uh, continue with uh, Mm, specialists. So, what are the elected uh, leaders, specialists in? If all the decisions are decisions of specialization, what are the elected leaders, specialists in? I do not think they specialize in anything as such, mm -hmm. but uh, they are leaders with accountability to the people. Mm -hmm. Whereas, we the have the the people. The specialists have no accountability to people, per se. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. In a way that's um, that's accountable to the people, mm -hmm. of the state, and um, with the with the aim of um, uh, achieving things that are profitable. So, um, uh, in fact, uh, extending to what we talked about in Crito, that well, when y you want to, uh, uh, Socrates asks you to go to the specialist. When you talk about the uh, uh, gymnast, you go to the expert in gymnast, not to the people at large. So, when you have a uh, medical issue, you go to a doctor. When you have, uh, when uh, your country or when your society is in have a facing an economic crisis, you go to a specialist. So, uh, uh, today our way of understanding the world has is uh, very strongly based on specialists. And philosophy is the hallmark of uh, uh, the generalistic outlook to life, or to the world out there, to knowledge out there. So, when we are having an uh, economic problem, uh, we look to the specialists in economics. Yes? Uh, I, I did not get the connection that you made between philosophy and specialization. Okay. Uh, now, different discipline, uh, uh, different areas of study specialize in different uh, uh, domains. So, uh, when we have uh, Crito, in, in, uh, in so, uh, Crito, Socrates himself said that, well, uh, we need to seek the opinion of the expert. Now, what is uh, uh, 
and, 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 and a doctor is an expert in medical sciences. Uh, uh, um, um, economist is an expert in uh, economic troubles. So, what is a philosopher expert in? So, well, uh, philosophy is uh, in contrast to these specializations, philosophy is the hallmark of the generalist. So, it is understanding at the broadest level. So, that does not make us uh, uh, or does not make philosophers specialists in something. So, uh, uh, it is just as uh, 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 it is a holistic approach. Yes, when you when you are looking for a uh, solution to a problem. You break down the problem into simple parts, and you uh, tackle each problem on its own basis. Now, there are specialists for each problem. Uh, in fact, that uh, brings a critical difference between how uh, uh, traditional Indian systems of medicine viewed the human uh, being, uh, versus the uh, western uh, mode of uh, medical treatment, where each human being is broken down into various parallel running. Uh, uh, systems and organs, and therefore each of which is, uh, each of which uh, each of which has a specialist and is treated accordingly. But uh, the Indian system or Ayurveda has classically regarded the uh, uh, human being as a whole to be treated as a whole, not as uh, taking care of the parts. Now this is very common to our understanding, perhaps in an elaborately uh, segregated and uh, uh, specialized world. We have specialists for every domain. So if there is a problem uh, with uh, the uh, uh, economy, we have uh, to seek an expert to, to seek opinion of an economist. You have a problem with uh, uh, the defense of the country, you seek opinion from the uh, general or from the uh, military community. Now, uh, Poggi starts here with cautioning that well, uh, philosophy to explore the uh, explore assumptions of the prevalent dominant domains of understanding. So, what are these prevalent dom, uh, uh, dominant domains of understanding? One of them is well uh, economics and the way the world economic order proceeds. So, uh, what sparks uh, uh, the author into this article is well, uh, fact number one that there uh, the income average uh, income of the world is growing, and fact number two that uh, uh, the, uh, there is uh, still uh, absolute uh, number of poor people growing uh, with uh, subhuman uh, living also growing. So, where can we or what can we make sense of this? So, is poverty a moral issue or an economic issue? Now, uh, uh, when I talked about governance, why are we uh, based on elected leaders? When uh, we could actually choose somebody who is specializing in uh, management, why not let a country run by a uh, be run by a corporation? Yes that why is uh, what is the space for a bureaucrat what is the space for a generalist so this is where uh, uh, the author puts in his uh, claim that well the economic theories are not final and they are to be absorbed with caution so it is not that the generalist can now uh, uh, rest in peace and with the specialist taking over so somehow to have the big picture and to see how uh, whether poverty is an economic issue or a moral issue we still need to have the generalist, who is, uh, who does not readily take in the opinions of the specialists as final. So, uh, and these are the dominant domains of understanding. Uh, uh, the world economic order is one. So, if we are looking for a correction of poverty, we need to look to economists, or we need to uh, uh, look to uh, leader of people. Mm -hmm. So, I would disagree with the point that uh, 
there is something in philosophy that makes it eminently suitable to, that makes it uh, more capable of having the general speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, first, uh, it is uh, um, the author's reaction is perhaps not so much to uh, uh, economics as a discipline, but uh, uh, the current economic order, which with the uh, dominant economic thinking that is taking place. So you could uh, 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 guess that out from the amount of research funding available to which kind of uh, research projects. Uh, taken up by the uh, world community at large. So, this is where he brings about the point that well, uh, 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 it is not that uh, uh, these uh, disciplines or these uh, 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 knowledge outlooks are uh, essentially uh, fraudulent, but it, that is there uh, they can they can interpret the truth in a way which is uh, suitable to uh, the ruling elite. And given why, why philosophers have to step in or why, what makes philosophy so, so, so uh, 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 perhaps uh, the most suitable discipline for the generalist, is because uh, the methodology of philosophy is very varied. We are not dealing with just techniques and tools. So, uh, uh, yes, there is a philosophical component in every uh, uh, academic pursuit, but if we are uh, uh, looking at philosophy as a subject, it is the epitome of uh, a generalistic outlook. So, whenever you are talking about an egalitarian economics or an e uh, e uh, economics uh, uh, raising questions about very general issues, that is mostly the philosophical or the introductory part of uh, economics. Well, whereas, the ten, uh, trend of specialization uh, tends to uh, limit any discipline to just the tools and techniques used. Whereas, uh, philosophy is perhaps the least affected by this uh, trend for specialization, because intrinsically specialization is uh, 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 difficult in philosophy, because it raises the broadest questions. To answer the broadest questions, you need input from various domains. Say a simple uh, classic philosophical question is that, how ought one to live one's life. Now, this will, uh, 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 this will invite uh, 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 opinions or invite information and understanding from a wide variety of disciplines, right? Starting from biology to sociology, that how should one treat oneself or treat uh, lead one's life? So intrinsically, philosophy is more uh, uh, akin to generalist uh, studies uh, uh, rather than other disciplines of specialization. Literature, of course, is one. Humanities in general and philosophy in particular is very strongly generalistic, and that is why the uh, amount of information required to make sense at any advanced level of uh, this discipline is much lesser than compared to other disciplines. Say, if you are uh, 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 trying to understand a medical problem, you need to be familiar with the medical uh, uh, vocabulary, uh, which uh, before uh, uh, comprehending the problem or you want to understand a uh, 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 computer problem or if you want to understand a economic problem, you have to understand, they have, they have built a lot of axioms on top of the fundamental axioms. Now, philosophy deals with very list, little uh, uh, axioms. So, that is why, uh, philosophy, uh, uh, people can walk into philosophy from various stages and uh, places in life. And that is perhaps, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, reason why, uh, philosophy would be more akin to uh, a generalist understanding. Because if you take one of the uh, uh, oft debated assumptions of eco uh, economics, uh, market economics and economics in general, the of interpreting persons as uh, uh, homo economicus, that who single mindedly and rationally seeks uh, optimally to satisfy his preferences. Such imaginary creatures are not good approximations of persons in the real world. Of course, that is uh, uh, the author's opinion, but the, the uh, basis of uh, uh, economics, more particularly market economics, more particularly the dominant uh, 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 strains of economics, which uh, uphold the world e current world economic order. What this particularly he is bringing to light is what it uh, rule. Uh, uh, we are making a decision between our preferences. Uh, these preferences can be outweighed by uh, moral notions, which for uh, which is difficult for the economic model to locate, to situate. That well, each one of us have preferences and our rationality is in single mindedly uh, following your uh, order of preferences. 
So, uh, if when the moral component enters that well, uh, it is almost like a simple uh, paradox that uh, we all uh, do what we want to do, that is fairly simple enough. And wanting to do, uh, what benefits us, right? that we are all selfish people, and we want to uh, do what benefits us, and uh, avoid what harms us. Right, that is the basic assumption, what the uh, Homo economicus tries to put up. Now, what about the say, acts of martyrdom, or acts of sacrifice. Where do we locate that? That, uh, if we all, uh, like the egoist claims, that we all function in, in this uh, rationale, that let us uh, uh, get as much as what we want. So, optimally we can, uh, we all function selfishly. But, uh, that is a poor representation of the world, because it leaves about that domain, where uh, people apparently choose to act, uh, in ways that will uh, uh, harm them, and perhaps benefit others. So, this whole notion of uh, uh, martyrdom, or of sacrifice, is contradicting. So, this Homo economicus, assumption of Homo economicus, rules out that possibility of sacrifice. In fact, would consider sacrifice as irrational, especially if that sacrifice is at the cost of one, uh, the agent's own self. So, that is what, uh, now, uh, the entire economic model, the current world economic order that is built, according to the author, is uh, assuming this as the fundamental uh, understanding of human beings. Now, if there is an axiomatic uh, error in the axiom uh, of, say, uh, Homo economicus here, then, of course, uh, the model that is built on such an axiom, will definitely be far from a real representation of the world out there. So, that is what uh, the author puts out, that such imaginary creatures, are not good approximations of persons in the real world. So, popularity of certain uh, methodologies of studies, uh, may be to the fact that they are supportive, rather than subversive of the position and policies of those in power. So, uh, this is almost uh, 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 what you raised about uh, political uh, interests, that well. Why are certain methodologies more popular, or certain disciplines, certain ways of uh, understanding. Say, uh, if I can quote an example, uh, uh, simplistic understanding of uh, uh, left oriented uh, economics, is on the decline. And uh, uh, market oriented e uh, economics, uh, is uh, funded, um, is better funded, and therefore, is flourishing much more than. Uh, say, uh, 20, 30 years back, in uh, even in our country. So, ev even in India, now you find that, uh, economic thinking takes directions. So, whether research and the advancement of knowledge, is as innocent, as uh, we would like it to be, or is it shaped by, uh, uh, interests which uh, uh, require a particular methodology to flourish. So, if we are uh, talking about these uh, methodologies, which are supportive, rather than subversive of the position and policy of, uh, uh, and policies of those in power. Uh, let me quote an example, say in the 1990s, when there was uh, this era of liberalization in India. That is when, uh, governance uh, required a more solid input, from the market understanding, or from the economic uh, understanding of the world economic order, than the requirement of the local people, or the people from whom uh, the government was, uh, was elected. So, it was then, then economist was take the economist, who uh, claimed to understand the world economic order, said that well, this is a right decision, if we open up our boundaries. And this was a uh, uh, decision from the dominant economic thinking at that time, and because it opened up. And that was a political decision, the economy opened up. Now, this opening up again started influencing, the kind of economics being done. So, understanding the world economic order, and how best we could benefit from it, became the uh, domi uh, dominant uh, methodologies of studies. And it seems to be that, uh, the author points out, that there is a kind of a uh, uh, hmm. implicit hand in glove arrangement, that well, uh, the kind of uh, 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 results, that uh, could, could uh, support uh, a governing class, seem to encourage the thinking class, to uh, think in, or, uh, or interpret, or uh, think in such a manner, that would endorse the governance of the governing class. So, uh, that it, it is a very deep, and a, a politically charged claim, that uh, this uh, philosopher here is making. And, 
uh, note that the, he is coming from a uh, rich developed country and then this is going to be immensely unpopular as a uh, view of the uh, in, in, amongst the uh, dominant view in his context. Is there any specific? Uh, well, here, of course, implicitly he is re uh, referring to uh, 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 um, the strain of economics that studies or that uh, endorses uh, the world economic order or free market. Uh, but uh, is he talking about that uh, our economy is based on the philanthropic approach rather than the egoistic approach? No, in fact, he's saying that the world economic order is based on the egoistic approach of all. That uh, th there is no, uh, uh, in fact, he goes ahead to talk about philanthropy and uh, what makes uh, philanthropy uh, really philanthropic and what makes it as an act of reparation. Perhaps in one of the coming slides we will talk about it. Shall we proceed? Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if the ruling class is the political ruling class is always in need with the economic elite of the country. Hmm. Or can, can we imagine a scenario where they do not get along mm -hmm. with each other? I mean, if we can imagine the scenario, then we can also imagine thinkers who, who engage in work that does not promote the interests of the ruling class because they would receive um, support for their research from the economic aid. Um, yes. So, uh, in fact, uh, the immediate example that comes to my mind is, uh, in fact, the, in the Indian historical tradition, uh, the learning or the learned class were supposed to survive on the dole of the uh, uh, majority of the society, not a direct uh, funding from the uh, ruling class. And therefore, if I uh, uh, historically, uh, uh, Chanakya was an example of an uh, th uh, evidence of a thinking class that did not get along with the ruling class. And therefore, in fact, the, the duty of the thinking class is to speak truth to power. So, if, uh, 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 if the ruling, if the thinking class is on the payroll of the ruling class, it uh, it is almost like a financial collusion and it is very difficult to, uh, um, for one class to uh, oppose the other. So, yes, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the author here is critiquing the world economic order, the economic system that we have come across, where uh, we find uh, such a strong link up between governing class and ruling class that, uh, uh, sorry, between the ruling class and the thinking class that we find that. Uh, uh, the ruling class supporting and therefore, those uh, elements in the thinking class that ju uh, provide uh, justification to the ruling class and therefore, it almost uh, starts as an uh, collusion. So, uh, the evidence of it is uh, in from various uh, disciplines. So, even from uh, 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 he, he talks about and it is a general uh, talk about uh, uh, patents and uh, Mm, and and, and uh, uh, trade agreements. These are are these all uh, a kind of an implicit cohort between uh, the thinking class and the ruling class. So the thinking class has to get away from the domain of. It is nothing uh, so specialized that we are uh, uh, we are incapable of uh, comprehending it or making sense of it or having an opinion on it. So it is not that the uh, uh, leader should always look on to the specialist. So. Uh, Mm, yes, I can think of one example in Indian history, where it did not get along well. And therefore, traditionally the thinking class has been, even in the Greek tradition, be it Socrates or Plato, has been uh, uh, exhibiting dissent with the ruling class. So, whether it was the capital punishment uh, of uh, Socrates, or the uh, change of uh, uh, empire of uh, uh, to Chandragupta Maurya. Both of these are examples where the ruling class interferes, or with the uh, with uh, the thinking class interferes with the ruling class. Can you more such if uh, the institutions in which they work, the academic institutions, had more independent sources of income funding, right? 
it's because they depend on the economic the ruling elite for the econo their economic that is true in fact support. this is actually a, a stronger critique of uh, uh, um, uh, of of education systems in the western world where uh, uh, unlike india where uh, educational institutions are uh, fully funded by private entities so uh, it it uh, uh, we find philanthropic and major contributions happening uh, from uh, from industrial classes to educational institutions and in a way implicitly this puts pressure on the line and direction of research that the uh, thinking class will take so perhaps uh, th uh, author argues for or suggests or implicitly suggests a class where uh, in the typical indian scenario where the government buffers this uh, influence between the uh, cloud of ruling class and makes it a systematic buffer that it is not a, uh, a direct ratio a direct relation of uh, benefiting so to uh, uh, keep the thinking class uh, neutral that way but the government the ruling class itself can be a source of pressure mm -hmm. on the thinking class so even when the government is the funder mm -hmm. we can't assume that the thinking class works independently in the okay pressure. now that was a difference between uh, 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 the constitution of a government and uh, the working of a corporation so in the uh, in any government setup the constitution of the government is so rigid and fixed that it is not uh, 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 fluid enough to allow the influence of the say the premier to uh, percolate into the uh, 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 thinking class because it is buffered by a very strong mechanism uh, legal mechanism that uh, uh, a fictional entity is created as uh, a government from whom the uh, who, who, who the premier is or the ruling class only gets the authority to manage this but it cannot fundamentally change the uh, uh, frozen rules which is possible in if it is a uh, more flexible corporately funded uh, uh, unit so uh, the stability or the robustness of uh, uh, a governmental intermediary is perhaps much higher than the flexibility and efficiency of a uh, corporate structure. So, okay, coming back here. So, when uh, uh, the author says that we cannot just learn and benefit from the theories of experts, we must think for ourselves and as best as we can become experts. So, that is a, a crucial thing that well, uh, can we uh, as, as philosophers or as, as uh, 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 human beings not specially trained for any particular discipline have an opinion on say uh, any macro economic uh, uh, or any macro level uh, policy that is be, that is being made so uh, if if uh, i need to know whether uh, uh, liberalization has done good to india or not done uh, bad to india do i need to go back to an uh, uh, economic expert to find that out or do i uh, can I find that out on my own. Now, here the author's claim is that well, we are alive enough and we are capable enough and the data is innocent enough to not to be contaminated by the theories of experts, which are between information and policies. So, increasingly uh, policy decisions, which are come from an elaborate backing of um, expert laden theories seem to have more credibility. That is what uh, the author is questioning here, that well as a citizen of uh, this country, you are capable of comprehending or uh, as a citizen of the world, you are capable of comprehending what the world economic order is uh, uh, all about, only you have to. Poor people, they can uh, like, uh, they, have, they do not have any much more idea about the economical things and other things, the, how can they will be think that I can do that. It is very difficult for them to justify his or her own uh, knowledge also. So, in that case, we can't say that we can think for ourselves. Like everybody has that capacity, but we need some like so resources. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how can we be say that, yeah, there is no need of export? At least, even if we are talking about educated people, still they are going like going to the experts and they are asking about the, for the merits and demerits because at least we, we want to know the exact uh, point where we can establish ourselves.
so in that case i think uh, we need both at a time like we need we have to improve our uh, own knowledge uh, to become an expert and we need also an expert okay uh, well uh, uh, let me uh, uh, think of an analogy let us say uh, having an opinion if following newspaper editorials. Now, these are uh, experts who are writing for the generalist to have a comprehensive view. So, uh, uh, we do need experts to uh, give opinions and, but those opinions are not taken for granted. Ultimately, we are in the judgment seat one and two is the point you raise uh, is actually the point, uh, 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 the issue that. Uh, uh, the author raises elsewhere in the article that, well, that uh, level of poverty and inequality can sometimes be so much that even uh, uh, the basic uh, subsistence required to think, to debate, to argue, and to take a decision seem to be uh, lacking. So, uh, uh, a, 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 a cate uh, categorically say, uh, uh, underdeveloped countries are marked by an almost dwindled middle class to a large number of uh, uh, lower income group who uh, who would not even be uh, willing to debate or uh, comprehend the uh, macro issues so with an increase of uh, the middle class uh, so the a number of people who are able to uh, have an opinion about uh, macro issues grows as the uh, world or the nation develops so uh, the, the uh, author is trying to point that out that well, uh, perhaps the world economic order is in such a way that this inequality continues to expand and this who are at the bottom end of this inequality are almost condemned to stay there with no uh, uh, internal movement between the layers of uh, uh, the economy. So, well then he uh, uh, he is talking about well, um, that is why the uh, generalist needs to return. Uh, which is epitomized by the philosophical outlook, definitely not by philosophers alone, by, but by a very generalistic outlook that well, we can understand uh, the world order without banking only upon the opinion of the uh, specialists there. Do we differ on this or, or please opine, what do you? How is it possible, if for a philosopher still we need something more, hmm. we can't say that uh, like I am a philosopher, so whatever I am looking or way of looking is like most important rather than others. It is very difficult to define also, because for economists they can say also, they have that same rights, then how can we will be use here, we are differentiated here the human rights, like uh, uh, we are categorized like between economics and political science or philosophy. Okay, this is not as much as a call to <coughs> disciplinal specialization, if I have uh, 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 Philosophical outlook means what? In what sense you are saying? A that very generalistic is? outlook. So, it is not that you have to be a <coughs> specialist in uh, philosophy to have this, but uh, well epitomized by the philosophical outlook is that uh, uh, well attitude which is displayed when you say that well I can uh, comprehend okay. a, a macro level uh, decision. So, it is not that well because uh, so and so said uh, re relying on testimony, relying on the testimony of the expert. So, this is not necessarily uh, uh, a battle between philosophy and economics, but a battle between specialization and uh, uh, generalization. That will talking about the philosophical outlook or generality, is there talking about that uh, everybody has the equal right to say something? Not they are giving the equal equality in one sense? Uh, well, uh, perhaps uh, what can be read into it is that everybody has the capacity to opine that the non specialist or the non expert is not uh, imperviously uh, isolated from the uh, knowledge or the thinking of the expert. That well wherever um, that the expert cannot hide behind a garb of numbers and make a uh, policy claim which the non expert has to handle at face value. Right. So, uh, yeah. that concern all of us in, in our uh, day to day 
social political existence is concerned, um, we are not completely ignorant of them. Mm -hmm. And um, um, because the, the, the things that um, that are that are being discussed are all around us, and um, we engage with them, and we have a practical understanding of them. Um, and I don't think he's talking about the theories of what's going on at the atomic or subatomic levels. He's not talking about such very specialized um, theories. It's, here he's talking about economics, and um, um, although some would it argue that economics also deals with really um, abstract and specialized stuff that the classic divide between microeconomics and macroeconomics uh, um, but the issue of poverty is uh, an issue that uh, that's so pervasive and so obviously present in the world that uh, you cannot plausibly argue that um, non-experts cannot have a say on it. Um, but you know, I um, I think what he's saying is that um, he is not making a case against the experts. Experts may go on with their work, but uh, we should always be aware, we the audience of the knowledge produced by the experts, should al always be aware that ideology can creep into any area of work and uh, even the experts may be ideologically biased in their so-called disinterested inquiry. So so when we receive what they put out in the world, we should uh, look at it critically using our own critical faculties and make our own judgments. Right. So Just as when we read a newspaper, when we read editorials in a newspaper, um, it's true that uh, the people writing them are uh, more informed in, in some ways, and uh, they express things more articulately. But uh, of course, they have their own ideology. So when we read those editorials, um, we have to read them with a pinch of salt and not, not take everything that they say at the face value. But you know, I you seem to be saying that um, any expert is necessarily limited by the narrowness of their field, the narrowness of their approach, uh, and in order to go beyond that narrowness, we need to adopt the generalist approach. Is that what you're saying? No, 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 not exactly that. All experts are. Uh, uh, confined to the narrowness of their approach. Of course, they are heavily influenced by the uh, tools and techniques that they use. So, uh, building an economic model with the uh, basis as homo economicus makes the model may be uh, sharp and accurate, but the axiom on which it stands is, uh, has, leaves a little uh, or, or uh, ignores a little uh, leeway of the idea of uh, self-sacrifice, and that could make a clear distinction at the level of the model. However, the model by itself would be uh, uh, accurate and uh, um, as it is. But yes, so it is not that, uh, uh, because this is just the prelude to the claim uh, he makes. In fact, this uh, article is a response to the uh, criticism he has received on his uh, book, on uh, real world and uh, poverty. So, that is where he being a non-economist, also has tried to understand um, applied uh, training in ethics he has had, and put forth an alternative view as how poverty can be uh, eliminated. So, uh, it is not only in the uh, uh, domain of specialized uh, uh, experts from uh, a particular uh, uh, methodology of thinking, who can best answer the question how to eliminate poverty. Here is an example of a, uh, a generalist, who has uh, accumulated or is empirically informed and suggests an alternative to poverty eradication on the world. He finds something erroneous with the world economic order, and uh, that he says can be only uh, brought to light if uh, the generalists uh, take a look at uh, uh, the world economic un uh, order and understand its intentions and uh, motives behind it. So, uh, the simple question. Yes. Also include the 
general public? Yes, absolutely. In fact, the generalist outlook is about the thinking uh, people. So, it is uh, if, if I am uh, uh, I am incorrect if I have uh, put in the impression that I only mean people trained in philosophy. Definitely no. It is about uh, the basic human ability of uh, reasoning and of uh, comprehending a situation and making a judgment on it. With uh, connect or trying to make a harmony between generalistic and experts okay. or he totally uh, like overlook the experts <coughs> rather than he is uh, well to uh, put it this way he is uh, demoting the experts okay. that well they are not at a uh, god like testimony level uh, as perhaps today we tend uh, we tend to uh, treat them or the uh, world order tends to treat them. Well, for an example of a climate change, mm. so in that case we do not need generosity, we need an expert. Mm -hmm. So, in that case how can we apply like uh, this theory can be applicable in that case. Okay, very interesting. Now, in uh, what case? Climate change. Well, climate like change. Shiawati. Is climate change or how we understand climate change. Now, uh, that is surprising that if we delve deep into scientific literature about climate change, there are very documented strongly justified scientific theories cl uh, claiming that well, there is no climate change taking place. So, uh, uh, there are countries who are not uh, signing into that protocol. So, how uh, the, the conclusion you want, evidence can very often be manufactured with it. And therefore, facts al alone, perhaps I can read into this that facts alone do not lead you to a decision. And that is where the generalist who has to under, uh, uh, enter to bring in a value fact combined understanding of the situation. So, uh, even something like climate change is it uh, it is not a clearly resolved issue and we can uh, know as much there is to know about it and have an opinion about it or think about an alternative uh, to it. So, uh, uh, there is disparate uh, data coming in from uh, scientific communities about the same issue. So, it has to be decided at the political level and that political level is the interface of the generalist with the specialists. It is not that the specialists are taking the decisions, it is still that the specialists take uh, uh, inform the generalists to uh, influence their decision. But perhaps the author is uh, against this uh, generalist becoming just an intermediary for the uh, apparently justified opinion of the specialist into becoming a policy. Right. So, uh, uh, well the, the question that uh, um, the author tackles is a very simple and a uh, perennial uh, issue that uh, plagues us all and for quite some time that uh, poverty in the world, what causes poverty and why does it still exist. Now, that is a very simple and almost such a common uh, accompaniment to human uh, existence in the recent uh, centuries that uh, it uh, does not seem to provoke that much of uh, a reaction that it uh, ought to. So, the one way of understanding world poverty has been as he paraphrases uh, uh, works from development economics is that uh, it is just local factors uh, as many methodologies uh, by which he would mean some of the dominant trains, uh, strains of development economics. Uh, he analyze or is it the big picture that can explain this phenomenon. The huge economic uh, uh, impact of the world economic order on the incidence of poverty worldwide. So, uh, development economics in the sense would uh, see uh, quotes Amartya Sen's works too, that it is the socio cultural effect and the, uh, the uh, attitudes to gender, the uh, cultural uh, baggage that is carried on in a community that results in that uh, poverty and uh, perhaps poor governance in that uh, area. So, uh, that has been the development uh, dominant development uh, uh, thinking for quite some time. Now, the author puts a very uh, a profound challenge to this kind of claim that well the uh, solutions are local that no perhaps something in the big picture in the macro uh, order in the world economic order influences uh, uh, poverty worldwide. So, uh, just some stray examples that occur to me is that well, 
uh, say the economic system is uh, brings prosperity more to a certain uh, region in a country and brings less proper uh, uh, less prosperity to a certain region in the world. So, uh, uh, is it just uh, the influence of local factors or the big system that is being fit, which may be more uh, uh, compliant to a uh, uh, one uh, local system and may not be compliant to another local system. The classic example we have of uh, uh, governance. Now, if we uh, import a system of governance into a society, which is uh, for which this system of governance is foreign. Let us take concrete examples. Let us say, the western mode of governance entering uh, 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 rural India. Now, uh, the western mode of governance is based on very strong individualistic status of the citizens. Whereas, uh, in larger parts of not just India, but Asian uh, countries, uh, communities uh, functions and, and take decisions as uh, unitary entities. So, uh, uh, models or, 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 or a large uh, or a model that worked in the western uh, uh, scenario need not be successful here. And it may be varyingly successful in different parts of uh, um, Asia, depending on the local culture. So, there is something also in the model itself, which is intrinsically favors certain attitudes and uh, people and uh, disfavors or uh, a presents disadvantage to certain people and uh, attitude. So, that is what this author is uh, hinting at that well, the world economic order is also responsible for this incidence of the uh, of uh, poverty worldwide. So, he, he goes on to put in a very uh, direct accusing claim that the more advanced, uh, more advantaged citizens of the affluent countries are actively responsible for most of the life threatening poverty in the world. So, for this of course, he does his uh, groundwork and in his book, he has presented the data in general, uh, um, uh, considering his, his area or his domain of study has been 15 years post the cold war period and a death uh, toll of 27 crore human beings in this period. So, uh, many experts have put in that we are better off from their past. Poggy questions that, well that that, that is uh, immaterial, that such penury exists, that is the problem. It is not that, uh, uh, it is less than the past. Then, uh, we are better off in terms of percentages, but not in terms of absolute numbers. Absolute numbers. So, that matters a lot, say th that is the folly of percentages. How data is not as innocent perhaps as uh, uh, many of us might tend to think. So, a simple uh, growth in uh, 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 reduction in poverty as percentage does not uh, represent uh, 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 a reduction in poverty in absolute numbers. So, uh, how quantification is made can be, uh, can indicate either way. So, what we are seeing is that converting or quantifying information does not necessarily be value neutral. So, it is not as, uh, we would like a system based on fact, uh, we would uh, we function in more or less a positivistic uh, system today, where we want as little contamination from subjectivity as possible. But uh, the author uh, rightly brings to light that, well, even the most sophisticated quantification also represents the value input of the quantifier. So, uh, yes. Do you mean fantastic increase in inequality? Oh, sorry, it means a fantastic increase in equality. Well, uh, uh, so, uh, severe poverty is entirely avoidable. Now, uh, uh, engaging with uh, empirical data available to the author, he brings out, uh, he makes this claim that, well, this, um, uh, this, this uh, poverty can be eradicated, but it is not, because there is a fantastic rate or increase in the rate of inequality that the world may be growing wealthier, but the wealthy are growing wealthier and the poor are going poorer. That is a common concern raised at various quarters. So, uh, to, to quote him, he says that, well, my main claim is that, is then that, by shaping and enforcing social conditions that forcibly and avoidably cause the monumental suffering of uh, global poverty, we are harming the global poor, or to put it more descriptively, we are active participants in the 
largest, though not the gravest crime against humanity ever committed. Um, so, here uh, the main claim that uh, Poggi is making is that, uh, we are actually and by we he means the uh, citizens of the developed country and in later he does uh, also include the uh, socio economic and political elite of the developing or underdeveloped nations too. So, basically the, yes. In the developed countries, he is uh, addressing the affluent systems, not all of them I think. Yes, uh, the, the affluent citizens, the rich nation, yes. Okay. But, uh, being part of the country, in fact this again brings uh, to my uh, mind, the uh, claim that uh, Socrates made in Crito, that uh, if, if we are part of a system. So, we are and we do not protest against it, we are implicitly giving our consent to it. So, being a part of the, because mostly the world economic order is being shaped by rich uh, countries. So, being a part of this uh, wealthy clout of nations and uh, being a citizen of these wealthy clout of nations and not uh, raising a voice against the system is in implicit cons granting consent to this system to uh, prosper and flourish. So, uh, the way the author puts it is that, this is as almost like a genocide, only it takes place in a very uh, staggered and systemic manner, with no accountability at any level. Okay. So, uh, he uh, relabels this as uh, the failure to aid and protect, and that is uh, relabeled as harm. So, he makes a very uh, 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 classic distinction between uh, positive and negative duties, that uh, uh, how this is like he, let us go to the next slide, it will perhaps bring it out. Yes. So, uh, how existing world poverty manifests a violation of our negative duties, that is our duties not to harm. So, uh, uh, positive duties are not tackled here, positive duties require one to do something, negative duties require one not to create harm. So, uh, the example that it gives is quite, uh, um, explains it very lucidly, that the duty not to assault people is more stringent than the duty to prevent such uh, assaults by others. And having assaulted another the attacker has more reason to ensure that his victim's injuries are treated, than a bystander would. So, what it means is that, well, uh, he attacks this notion that even implicitly Singer talked about in uh, his article of famine, affluence and morality, that well, we may be at peace that, or, or the affluent. Let us understand the affluent as affluent across nations, because people who are in, cap in positions, or who to make uh, even a noise, if not effect a policy change, make noise about the uh, subscription to macro level policies. Uh, so, even if we are not uh, uh, preventing harm, uh, that we ought to prevent harm to uh, uh, others. So, this non-protest against macroeconomic policies is actually uh, harming proactively, and not that uh, we are standing uh, as a bystander and seeing harm happen. So, he shifts the liability of uh, the uh, uh, world poverty on developing nations, via the and on, on developed nations and the elite of the developing nations, which allow these world economic policies to prosper. So, it is not that uh, the world bodies do an act of charity, when he gives the example of uh, uh, an uh, industry, which is polluting a river, and then makes grants for uh, uh, studying pollution, or reducing pollution. That, that, that is no more to be seen as a charity, and what uh, uh, Poggi here sees, that the world community doing, by making these huge aids and donations. It is just a minor, uh, uh, what it seems to be calling philanthropy, and charity, is, uh, is almost, uh, is not even uh, the minimum expected for as uh, duties of reparation for the harm that has already been done. So, uh, uh, he takes this uh, negative duty in the strongest sense. Yes. Uh, Singer does is um, um, redefine the notion of charity as a positive duty, mm. if I understand it correctly. And what he does is take us beyond the notion of positive duties to. Uh, 
with the intermediate duties, which he argues are more stringent. Right. That is duties of reparation. That it is it is not uh, a favor, not an uh, act of charity, but it is almost a, uh, a loan that one has to repay. That, uh, uh, in fact, we raise that question whether, uh, because this loan or this moral loan has been uh, taken by generations before. So, we already have enough uh, uh, philosophical issues about moral account accountability over a lifetime. So, this is asking for moral accountability over generations. So, what uh, uh, the colonizers have uh, taken away um, uh, centuries from uh, today, do the uh, successors of the colonizers owe that back to the uh, colonized? Yes, ex colonized. So, that is the question that uh, uh, he takes for granted, but that has also been uh, places where uh, this uh, has been critiqued that well, uh, can we at all start afresh when not considering what is uh, the historical situation of it. So, he, he requires, uh, regards these duties of reparation much stronger than charity. So, it is that the wealthier uh, nations and uh, the world economic order needs to be changed, uh, so as to uh, fulfill its negative duty, its duty of reparation to, uh, because this, this sustains the inequality, the, this um, uh, macro world order that is there. It benefits and perpetuates from uh, the current inequality. So, a world uh, economic order needs to be changed, which would. Uh, so, the uh, fault or the defect is in the uh, macro level order um, in uh, tackling poverty. So, let us think of an example. Hmm. Yes, or uh, world economic order, think of a, uh, a local example, where a macro policy uh, uh, influence.